All right, students, welcome to the Net Ionic Equations Notes. Remember, because this is video notes, you can always pause the video if you need to take some extra time to write things down. You can always rewind backwards if you need to go back and review things. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the essential question. Please write this at the top of your page in some type of a colored ink. This is the focus of what we're talking about. What is a net ionic equation? Now remember, you, we're not just looking for a definition. We want to go deeper. You want to not only know what a net ionic equation is, you want to be able to basically write one and find one out. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. In order to get to a net ionic equation, there are a few subsequent reactions or subsequent equations we have to go through. The first is a molecular equation, and I'll show you what each of these are in a minute, but molecular equations are written first. Then we turn molecular equations into complete ionic equations, and then we take complete ionic equations and we turn them into net ionic equations. So we have to kind of go in order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each type of example. Here's the first one. It's a molecular equation. The molecular equation is just the full balanced equation that has both the reactants and the products and their phase symbols. Now, this is the type of equation we've been doing for a long time, so you should know how to do this. In fact, why don't you go ahead and pause this video right now and see if you can figure out the products of this reaction, balance it, and figure out the phase symbols. Really, pause the video right now and do it. I hope you paused the video and I hope you tried. That's really the best way to learn is to see if you can try to do it yourself and then check your answers. But let's see if you figured it out. Here's the answer to our molecular equation. It's two potassium chloride, which was aqueous, and then we have lead to nitrate, which is also aqueous. They react to form two potassium nitrates and lead to chloride, which is a precipitate. So here we have our insoluble precipitate. So this is a double replacement reaction that we balanced. And then we used our, our solubility rules to be able to figure out what our product phase symbols are. And so lead to ni or, sorry, potassium nitrate is aqueous and lead to chloride is a precipitate or it's insoluble. All right, so we're going to take our molecular equation and we want to turn it into a complete ion equation. So a complete ionic equation shows all the aqueous substances as a dissolved ion. So let me show you what that looks like. Here's our molecular equation. Let's turn that into a complete ionic equation. And right now it just kind of seems exploded at you, but let me kind of explain what's going on here. Little by little, there are a few rules or a few things you need to realize what's going on and to follow. Let's start with two potassium chloride. Now two potassium chloride from aqueous, remember aqueous just means dissolved in water. And as we've talked about before, if something's dissolved in water, an ionic compound, each of its pieces break apart. And so a complete ionic equation just shows those pieces broken apart. Now, notice here that our two potassium chloride becomes two potassium and two chlorine. So one thing to remember is that you need to distribute coefficients if this exists. So remember two potassium chloride, so that means both of them get that too. Two potassium with a positive one charge and two chlorine with a minus one charge. All right, let's take a look at the second one, lead to nitrate. Now notice lead to nitrate does not have a coefficient. So lead does not have a coefficient. It's just lead with a positive two charge. But nitrate does have a coefficient, and that's because if you notice up here in the molecular equation, lead, there's two of them. You needed to have two, I'm sorry, nitrates, there's two nitrates. You needed to have two nitrates to balance out the charge of lead, lead being a positive two, nitrate being a minus one. So one of the things you should remember is that subscripts from molecular equations to complete ionic equations become coefficients. Now, not all subscripts do. Notice that in nitrate, NO3 does not become a coefficient. That's because this NO3, this three right here, belongs to nitrate. So nitrate needs to stay the same, but the two up here just means that there are two nitrates. So there has to be two nitrates. All right, look at the third example, two potassium nitrate. Now, nothing new here. We're just gonna distribute those coefficients again to, to potassium and nitrate. Let's take a look at the last one though. This is lead to chloride. Notice that lead to chloride doesn't change. And that's because the last thing we need to realize is that solids, anything that's a solid or a precipitate, anything that's liquid, like water for example, and anything that's a gas do not break apart. Those things stay as they are in a complete ionic equation. And that will become important later when we talk about net ionic equations, which we'll do right now. 
So again, I brought over my complete ionic equation. We're going to take this complete ionic equation and turn it into a net ionic equation. Now, net ionic equation only shows the things, only shows the substances that are directly involved in the reaction. So how do we know it's directly involved? We'll take a look at both sides. Do you see anything that's the same? For example, look at potassium. There's 2K plus on one side, on the reactant side, and there's also 2K plus on the product side. Nothing changed about potassium. We can say the same thing about nitrate. Nothing changed about nitrate from the reactants and the products. These are called spectator ions. Now think about spectator sports. In a spectator sport, the spectators don't participate in the game. They're not players. Similar in a net ionic equation or a complete ionic equation, the spectator ions don't actually participate in the reaction. Nothing changed about them. And if they don't change, this, they, don't, they are not part of a chemical reaction or a chemical change. So to go from a complete ionic equation to a net ionic equation, we take out the spectator ions. So we're just going to write down what's left over. Two chlorine with a minus charge plus lead with a plus two charge gives you lead two chloride. Now this is a net ionic equation. And if we've written everything out great, we know we did it right when everything's balanced. Notice I don't need to go back and balance this equation. It's already balanced. And these are the participants of our reaction. All right, so we went through an instructor practice. Let's do a student practice. I'm gonna give you a practice problem. See if you can figure out how to solve for the answer. The question is, determine the net ionic equation for a reaction between phosphoric acid and sodium hydroxide, which is a base. Pause this video right now. Don't let me go through it right away. See if you can figure it out yourself and then check your answers in the end. All right, did you pause the video? I sure hope so. Let's go ahead and check your work. The first thing we're gonna have to do is figure out what the molecular equation is. So right away, I'm gonna show you the molecular equation. I hope you got this one. So here we have phosphoric acid, which is aqueous, plus sodium hydroxide, which is aqueous, and it makes sodium phosphate, which is a salt, but it's aqueous thanks to our solubility rules, and water, which is a liquid. All right, let's take that molecular equation and turn it into a complete ionic equation. Remember, this is where we dissolve or show all the aqueous substances as ions. So it's kind of long, but anything that's aqueous becomes an ion. So we have three hydrogen because look, we had a subscript up here. So that comes three hydrogen. Then we have a phosphate. We have three sodiums and three hydroxides because coefficients are distributed. Then we have three sodiums again, and we have a phosphate. And then notice that our three H2Os, because H2O is a liquid, it does not dissolve. It's not aqueous. All right, last thing we're going to do is cancel out those spectator ions and write the net ionic equation. This is the ultimate goal. So phosphate was found on both sides. We have sodium found on both sides. So the only thing left over are our three hydrogens, our three hydroxides, and we get three waters from that, which is really great. All right, nice job, guys. That's the end of the notes. Go ahead and if you need to, go on to the practice or whatever else you're doing today. Thanks. Good luck.